you open your mouth and speak to him. Is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The owner of gold and silver, his name is highly exalted in this place. We love you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We lift our voices that we may adore that name that is above every other name. There is no name that has been given unto us other than that name. O Silebarado Shita Katakado. And so you have done us so well. We give you all the praise, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done me well, Jesus. You have done me well. You have done me well. You have done. Oh, sit in 
spirit of the Lord is hovering over this place and sorting everyone in this place. The evidence is all that that sickness you've been fighting for every now and then it is leaving right now. Spirit of the Lord. The evidence is all that you've been fighting for every now and then it is leaving right now. The evidence is all that you've been fighting for every now and then it is the spirit of the Lord is speaking to you and you have words to speak to him too. Help me open your mouth and begin to speak to him. But there is a certain battle he's fighting for you and on your behalf. And the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you all the honor, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much choir. You can sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I welcome you once again to the supernatural house. The Christ centered church. Committed to discovering, developing, and we deploy each one for the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, help me say hi to your neighbor. Welcome to this. Welcome them to the supernatural house. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that he has done you well, just like you sang the song. Praise the Lord. Is anybody ready to receive from the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me see someone ready for the word. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. How about all the time? Praise God. Amen. Now in Exodus chapter 20 to chapter 30 God gives a plan to Moses and he tells him you're going to do this I'm telling you and make sure that you are doing whatsoever I am telling you now Moses goes to Mount Sinai and from chapter 20 to chapter 30 God is speaking to him giving him a formula per formula on how he's going to do things and the plan of God for him to call Moses was to give him a plan on how to build his tabernacle praise the Lord their children of Israel were in the wilderness and when they camped at Mount Sinai God called Moses and for 40 days and 40 nights he was speaking to him while the children of Israel were camping down and they patiently waited for Moses but Moses was getting instruction from the Lord instruction after instruction and God told Moses let's go in, in uh, 25 Exodus 25 verse 40 the very last verse the Bible says and look give us an OT hallelujah the Bible says that be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here could you please remove the slide but be sure Kakasa, that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain now God tells Moses that I've given you my plans and my formulas on how you're going to build the, the tabernacle but be sure that you do everything according to the plan I have given you praise the Lord now let, let me tell you something in Genesis Adam was given a plan and a formula on how to lead the earth praise the Lord and he was instructed by God himself that you should eat of every other thing but of this fruit in the middle of the garden you shouldn't touch praise the Lord now because Adam did not know Adam that the instruction of the Lord is, has a formula 
And the moment you fail the formula, you're going to be chased out of the garden. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, Eve goes, and then the, the serpent who tempted Eve. And they ended up eating the forbidden fruit. Praise the Lord. And what happened to Adam and Eve? They were chased out of the garden. But to Moses, it is the same thing happening. God is telling him, be sure that you're doing everything according to how I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Now what is God telling him? Exodus, that very chapter, verse 2. Verse 2. Tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all those whose hearts are moved to offer them. Now tell your neighbor God wants to live among us. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's desire is that he may live among us. Not to live in heaven. Not that when he comes among us then we run away. He wants to live among us. Now he tells Moses, tell the people of Israel to bring me their sacred offerings. To bring me their sacred offerings. Accept the contributions from all those whose hearts are moved. Now there is a difference between giving to the Lord and being told to, to give to the Lord. There is also a difference being moved to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The, God told Moses that accept the contribution from only those that are moved. Hallelujah. There are some people when we come to the Lord He wants to dwell among us But we are not moved They preach the word You come to church every day But you are not moved You are just told to do things You are just told to pray You are just told to read the Bible You are just told to do things things in the spiritual realm. But you are not moved you by yourself. Now the Bible says in that very verse that God does not accept those that are not moved. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are here and you are doing every kind of ministry. But they are just instructing you. They are just forcing you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now God says accept the contribution from those that are moved. Meaning, when Moses came and told them you must offer to the Lord. He kept seeing their hearts. And those that accepted and were moved to give. The Lord said that you must accept their contribution. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now Exodus 29. 29, 42 to 46. The Bible says that these burnt offerings, like the sacred offerings in verse 2, like we have read, he says these burnt offerings are to be made each day from generation to generation. Offer them in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle. Praise the Lord. And offer them in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle entrance. And then he says there I will meet with you and speak with you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
There is a place that God wants to meet us. And that place is the entrance of the tabernacle. He told the children of Israel to, do, to, to, to make the tabernacle. And he gave them the formula of how to make the tabernacle. How to mold the Ark of the Covenant. Praise the Lord. Amen. But then he says that these burnt offerings, these sacrifices, this, this way you surrender in church, praise the Lord, Amen. is to be made each day from generation to generation. Offer them in the Lord's presence at the tabernacle. And where should you uh, 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 offer them? At the entrance. Hallelujah. Amen. There I will meet with you. And you speak to you. Now the Lord wants to speak to you. But at the entrance of the tabernacle, there is no sacrifice. Praise the Lord. Every time you're coming to church and you want the Lord to work for you, at the entrance of the tabernacle, you have not burnt a sacrifice. There is no offering for the Lord to come and speak to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord needs, let us read the next verse. I will meet the people of Israel there in the place made holy by my glorious presence. Now, you know, the Bible says that God is the one making the glorious presence. And you're not the one going, He's the one coming to meet you. But where is He coming to meet you? At the place of the sacrifice. Praise the Lord. That I will meet the people of Israel there. In the place made holy. Now your, your job here is to sacrifice the Lord and make sure the place is holy. Now his glorious presence, his glorious presence is brought by him. He comes with his glorious presence to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Then you, you start testifying. And you say, I met the Lord. I saw the Lord. Because when I burnt my sacrifice at the entrance of the tabernacle, his glorious presence covered me. And the things that I was praying for started to manifest in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The next verse. The Bible says, Yes, I will consecrate the tabernacle and the altar. And I will consecrate Aaron and his son to serve me as priests. The last verse. Then I will leave among the people of Israel and be their God. 46. And they will know that I am the Lord their God. I am the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I could, I could live among them. And then he repeats, I am the Lord their God. Now in verse 46, God is trying to show us that the reason that's why he removed the children of Israel from Egypt. The major reason was to live among them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The many, many reasons as to why you are being healed from that kind of chronic sickness is not for you to be happy Yes, you can be happy. It is not for you to talk about it. Yes, you can talk about it. But the main reason is that God might live in you. Praise the Lord. God, I believe that God cannot be in the body that is sick. I strongly believe that God cannot be in the body of a prostitute. I believe that God 
God cannot be in the body of that somebody who does not care about the things of God. This is why he says in verse 46 that the reason I'm taking you out of Egypt, I want to settle and live among you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now some people say we have God and God is in us. Praise the Lord. Amen. But when it comes to the time of feeling his glorious presence, we do not see God. Now God is saying that I want to live with you. I want to live in you. Everything that I'm doing, I want to live in you. There are men who call God. God, I want to see you in my family. I want to see you in my wife. I want to see you in my church. I want to see you in my children. I want to see you in my job. But they forget to say, I want to see you in me. Praise Praise the Lord. Amen. God wants to work. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is coming from you that He may start working in your things. Hallelujah. Amen. That He may not only come to work for your wife. Because you want your wife to get a job. Because you want your wife to look good. Because you want your wife to stop cheating. And you want God to come and meet your wife. He wants to meet your wife and also meet you. Praise the Lord. He doesn't want to meet your children that your children may grow very well. In the fear of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants that as he meets your children. You also accept that he may meet you. Praise the Lord. Amen. He wants to meet your business. As he meets you too. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now tell yourself I am the reason. For his glorious presence. Praise the Lord. Repeat is that I'm the reason for his glorious presence. Praise the Lord. And then he says that I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. Now as we grow in the spiritual realm, God is bringing us from some habits. He is bringing us from some bondages. He is bringing us from some things that we have been committed to that are not pleasing to him. And he's saying that as, as, as I bring you out of Egypt, I want to live in you. Praise the Lord. Is somebody following? Hallelujah. That he wants to live in you. Now Stephen, Stephen in Acts 7, Stephen was was, was, was taken to court. And when he was taken to court, he was asked many questions. And then he starts to talk. Praise the Lord. Amen. He talks from Genesis to Revelation. When he is in court, Amen. Act 7. Hallelujah. Amen. We are not going to read the whole, the, the whole, but we are going to read verse 48. Now the reason as to why God told the children of Israel to build the tabernacle. It was because these people were not seeing him. It was only Moses going to the mountains and speaking to God. And then the children of Israel were complaining every time. But you, you see God, but for us we don't see him. But you pastor, Musa. when you come here, you are the only one who do miracles. For us we don't do miracles. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. My neighbor is sick, but I even failed to pray for him to get healed. Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. It looked like it was only Moses who had the anointing. And so God tells Moses, it's okay. Build the tabernacle and I will come and be with you. That everywhere you go, the children of Israel will see me. Praise the Lord. 
Now God begins a plan of how he may settle with his people. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then Acts says, 7.48, however, the most high does not live in the temples made by human hands. As the prophet says, now here Stephen was telling the court that David begged that he might build the temple of our Lord and God refused and Solomon was favored in fact the Bible says that David was he, he had favor, the favor of the Lord and he was privileged that he may ask for the Privilege to build to build the temple of the Lord. The Lord rejected it. And then it was Solomon that built the temple of the Lord. But here Stephen says that however however much you're trying to see that I'm in your children however much you're trying to see that I'm in your wife however much you're trying to see that I'm in your church if I am not in you you I have made with my hands you I have called by my name I am not going to come now Solomon built the temple and he thought that the presence of the Lord would be there 24-7. Stephen comes to disqualify that and says that however the Most High does not live in temples made by human Praise the Lord. Amen. You are doing your things according to your efforts. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when they ask you in church, you're saying, yeah, it is the Lord who has done those things. When it is you, but you, you, you say God has done the things. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you from the point which God starts to do things in your life. It is at that moment when you realize that now he is truly in me. Hallelujah. Amen. However, the Most High does not live in temples made by human hands. Amen. Now, which kind of temples have you been building there? That the Lord may be glorified in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Which businesses have you been building there and forgetting that He wants you? What are those things that have been stressing you so much and you're forgetting church? What are those things that have been stressing you and you have been forgetting about who God is in your life? What are those confessions that you've been confessing every day and you've been forgetting that God wants you? Praise the Lord. Amen. These people thought that now when we build the temple, let God be there. We can do our things and his presence will only be in the temple. Take Let us go and do our business. Praise the Lord. Amen. But the Bible says that God wants you. That's why he says that heaven is my throne. Went today. And the earth is my footstool. Who could make me such a beautiful temple? That's verse 49. Who could build, who could make me such a beautiful temple? He was trying to disqualify them that all the things you're doing. Whatever you try to do and think it is so great. You're doing your things in a city. When I'm not in them. Do not even glorify my name for them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 4 7. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing. Somebody who gets wisdom, it, he has all the principles he needs. Praise the Lord. That wisdom is the principal thing. And there, he says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, 
understanding. Get understanding. Praise the Lord. Amen. You've been building temples. You wanted the Lord to rest in them. But the Bible says that if you have wisdom, you have the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding. The Bible wants us to have this understanding that the Lord lives in us. He does not live in the temples we want him to be. He does not live in the wives we want him to be. The Bible says that God lives in us. This is why 1 Corinthians 6.19 says that don't you realize 1 Corinthians 6.19 The Bible says that don't you realize that you are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. That I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who knows that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That don't you realize? You're building temples everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And don't you realize that I'm you? You are the only temple I want. Even when you forsake the rest is of the you things. that I want. It's that temple that can satisfy me. And when I told Moses to build the tabernacle, I didn't mean that I will stay there forever and ever. I was only trying to come amid the children of Israel. Because they were not seeing my prayers. Even when I could do for them good things, they ceased to see me. They could not acknowledge that I'm the one doing all the Great things. So the Bible says, Don't you realize that you are the, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Now look that. Look at that. That you do not belong to yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can be a semaka. You might be the owner of your home. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you are the one commanding here, 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 and everything. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are the one who commands children to church. You tell the children, wife remain. Praise the Lord. Amen. I will not go today. I will come the next time. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that you do not belong to yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. You do not belong to yourself. That is when the Baganda said Praise that. Amen. You do not belong to yourself. The Lord lives in you. And He took over you. Praise the Lord. Amen. When He took over you, He wants that when you are telling your children to go to church, you're the first to tell yourself that we are going to. He wants that when you're telling your people to call a business in. And this business will be giving tithe. This business, you are the first to burn that offering. Now, the Lord lives in us. And we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. When he made the tabernacle, the Bible says in Revelation 21, verse 3, that I heard a loud, a loud shout from the Lord from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them. He says that look, God's home is now among his people. God's home is now among you. It is no longer in the tabernacle. It is no longer in heaven as you thought. God's home is now among you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he says, and they will be his people. He will live with them. And they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Praise the Lord. God wants to be with you. 
He wants to deal with you. That he may deal with everything that concerns you. That he may work in you. That he may live among you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I surrender all to you and everything.